Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about um, the cloth. We're going to continue our talk about physics. So let's get started. First of all, for the cloth, what we got to do is we got to make a 3D object, a plane. Now, we don't have to make this. You could actually import your own model of a um, piece of uh, fabric, clothes, whatever you want. But this is the easiest way to do straight from Unity. So I'm just going to name this uh, hammock because we're going to make some kind of hammock that's going to kind of hang between these trees. So we'll go to our scene view and uh, we'll bring up this hammock real quick and we'll rotate it. Or actually we won't rotate it, we'll scale it down. So about, let's see how this looks. Now, extend this right here, hold it like that. Now it's clipping between the trees, but right now when the, the actual cloth gets added, it will kind of droop down. So I'll even bring it up a little bit. Now what we're gonna do is go to the components, go to physics, and we're gonna go to the cloth uh, section. Now with the cloth, section selecting <clears throat> we're gonna see our plane look like this now let me actually make this a little wider so everybody can see all right so this is our cloth now let's say i hit play right now so when i hit play as you can see it just falls straight down nothing happens so for this to work we got these two little buttons right here this one right here is to edit the collision and this one right here is to edit the actual constraints of the cloth so what we could do is as you can see right here, we got the max distance and we got surface penetration. So the black color means that there's gonna be no constraints at all. So as you can see, there's no constraints. So now if I go over here and let's say I start clicking all these and they all turn green. Now when I hit play, you're gonna see that the cloth is gonna be constrained only on this side. So it's not gonna completely fall down. So as you can see, it constrains on this side. And as you can see, it just swings around. Right now, you can see it is not colliding with the tree. For the re the reason for that is right here where you go to capsule colliders or sphere colliders, you have to actually add each uh, object that will collide with this. So for this tree, let me click on this palm tree, and it has a capsule collider. So I'll go to the hammock, and I'll add, for instance, two right now. So I could add both my coconut trees. So I'll add this one, no, that one, because they both have uh, capsule colliders. And then I'll just hit play. And then as you can see, it collides with the tree. So it's actually hitting the tree. And uh, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna add another constraint over here. So now when we hit play, as you can see, it just hangs in between the both coconut trees. Now, right here it has zero to 0 0.2. That just means how much it will get constrained. So let's say I, I, I put it to zero. Now, when I paint it, let's say I just paint these corners right here, just like this, and I hit play, just so you guys can see the effects of it. So now, Oh, well, you can't really see too much of it, but if we go to the scene view and we click our hammock and we go to the settings, we can kind of see that it, it actually has a, kind of a, so let's see. So now you can see it kind of has less of a constraint. Let me go back. Okay, so if I hit this and then I change these to be green and I change this to be red, you'll see the effect that it has. So now you can see the effect a little more. So as you can see, with the, the cloth set to zero, it has more constraint, so it has no distance. This is what this means, the distance from the actual, from where the plane starts. So from where this whole plane starts. As you can see, this is 0.2 distance from the plane. So like, let's say if I put it to a two, I click this, and let me go back. I don't think you could do it in edit mode. So if I click plane, go to two and I click these. As you can see, the other ones change because now this table has been extended all the way to two. So now I could have say two and then, uh, yeah, when I hit play, you can see that it droops down even more as you can see. You could um, also change the, the stiffness of the stretchiness, so let's say I go to uh, 0.2, and then let me just set this back to how I had it. I don't 
Springs, Flynn. Whoa, I added way too much. But that's because of the stiffness. So if I go back to one, maybe it's not because of that. Go back to point two. Okay, and then you could change the stretch stiffness. Let's say we change it to point two. As you can see, it kind of it's not as stiff in anymore, it kind of droops to the side, the edges of the actual uh, material, as you can see, move it down and yeah. So there's also bend stiffness, so you can have the, when it bends, the actual stiffness of that, let me turn on this capsule collider. This capsule collider, I just got this nav mesh agent with the, with the move agent script. I'll click here as you can see it don't work because I do not I forgot to add um, I forgot to add this capsule collider onto it so I'll just add it and then it should work now and as you can see it works and then like I was saying you could change the actual stiffness of the bend so as you can see it's becomes a little more stiffer little kind of more realistic so you, can, you know adjust this how you want and then you could also use uh, tethers now tethers um, tethers I'm actually not sure what this is I've never really used it so uh, let's learn about it right now but then you could also use gravity so if you don't want to use gravity it will you know pretty much just fall to the floor uh, right here it says tethers apply cons constraints that help to prevent the moving cloth particles from going too far from the fixed lens this helps to reduce extra stretching so if you don't want extra stretchiness you can have that on if you don't mind the extra stretchiness you just turn that on or have it off and then the capsule and then of course since I was in play mode I gotta re-add this and then now I can move so I don't know if you could really tell the difference, but it's supposed to remove the extra stretchiness. So that's what that's for. And then there's dampening. So if you want to have like um, kind of an air resistance to it, you could add dampening to it. Then there's external and random acceleration. This is so you could actually move uh, the hammock. So it could give it kind of a like a wind effect. So I have a wind zone in my scene as you can see right here. There's a wind zone, but I'm gonna turn it off right now so you guys could actually see that it's not the wind that's affecting it. So you can see the trees right now. They're moving, everything's moving. So let me turn off the wind zone. You can see the wind stops. Now this water, I'm gonna link all these assets uh, down below uh, in the description, but all these assets were free from the Unity uh, Asset Store from the sand textures to the water, uh, the rocks, this coconut tree. The only thing that wasn't was of course this cloth that we're making. But anyways, let's go back to the hammock and we'll go to the external uh, acceleration and we just add it. acceleration as you can see, it starts moving. So it makes it that wind effect. And then you could also add random. So I added on the Y so it kind of bounces up and down while rocking back and forth. We can add more. So there's more of a little rocking. I could, you know, just turn this to zero. You can see it's just bouncing up and down. And then uh, there's also velocity scale. So we could change this and it kind of multiplies the, the accelerations together. There's also world ex acceleration scale. So all these kind of do some mathematical function that you could probably look up if you if you are able to edit this script but anyways um, after that there's also collision mass scale so this is how 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 much mass the hammock will be pretty much so if I again do all this process and I go t towards it as you can see it's kind of more stiff more hard to get through my character wasn't able to get through as easy 
Okay, so then there's also, um, after collision mass scale, there's also use continuous collision. So if you wanna, you know, use uh, collisions continuously, there's use virtual particles. Now virtual particles, they just, um, they make it more, it says right here that they, they add one uh, virtual particle to improve collision stability. So if you don't have this uh, checked on, it won't, it will still collide, but it won't be as stable. And then solver frequency, this allows it to be a little more realistic because it actually, as you can see down there, it iterates per second. So, so uh, it actually does its magic, you know, quicker when it's uh, at a higher number. If you set it to, let's say, let me put it to one. Let me turn on this capsule real quick and finally add it to the hammock and then we'll hit play. Now, whoa, what did I do here? Oh, hold on. I'm gonna put use tethers. So let me put like 50. See if it don't start flipping out on me. Oh, that's weird. Uh, here, let me just remove this real quick and add it all over again because I think it's because I was messing with it. I actually deleted it and then undoed it. And then when I undoed it, it, it started acting like that. So let me just go back, put it to one, hit play. Uh, and then I forgot to actually uh, put weights on it. So sorry about this, guys. Let me put some weights on this. Uh, let me reduce, reduce the brush size. And I'm going to add this capsule collider here i'm gonna hit play and then as you remember i changed the solver frequency to one so now you can see kind of drags along i think i missed uh one of the weights over there but if i stretch it you can see it just kind of stretches all the way out now if i had this back at a high number let me go over here so let me set this back to a high number to 120 iteration so now it actually add, acts a little more realistic, that in mind. And then uh, there's also the sleep threshold. That's just uh, the amount of times the collision of this um, cloth is asleep. And then of course, here there's the colliders that we could add. We could only add sphere and capsule colliders. And then uh, there's also the virtual particle weights. Uh, virtual particle weights. I wasn't able to find any documentation on it. So if I go here, go all the way down. Uh, yeah, I don't, I didn't see any documentation on it. Me personally, I've never used it myself. So I'm not sure what it could be used for. Oh, and then another thing I wanted to show you guys is also the, uh, the collision. But so you can see here the constraints that you could add. So as you can see right here, there's the zero. It adds no constraint, so it's kind of held to its normal position. And then the further green it gets, the more uh, it gets dragged down. So as you can see. And then uh, this is the one I want to show you. So when you click here, edit uh, cloth, self-collision, inner collision, you get this uh, brush with these, with these little circle nodes around it. Now you can change right here from inner collision to self-collision. Now self-collision, as you can see, you can't, you can't see no nodes or anything. So to actually edit this, you would have to go to inner collision and then um, go to paint. And then you could actually paint where you want that the inner collision to be. So I could, let's say, adjust it like this and just, just have it like this, just so you guys could see kind of what it does. And then now when I hit play and then when I start colliding, you could kind of see the collision, well, I don't know if you could, if you're really able to tell, but now they're actually, the, the cloth is actually colliding with itself on certain uh, areas, because since I didn't paint the whole collision. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that for the, the cloth. If you guys have any questions, let me know. You know, just a quick recap, you know, you could change the stiffness, the bend stiffness, friction. So if you wanted to have friction, so if you want it kind of to like stick on the player or not, so if you put zero, it won't like stick at all. Uh, you could change the, you know, the scales. Right here, you could actually change, you could paint what effects you want it to have. So, you know, just zero, it won't really affect anything. And then uh, green, it will kind of drag it downwards. So yeah, just if you have any questions, let me know. Like I said, I try to rush 
through these things just so um, you know I could get by all these videos so I could guys so I could show you guys as much as possible so you guys could at least uh, get you guys' foot in the door and um, understand these things a little better and then later on when I start you know making tutorials of uh, full games how to make a game of course we're gonna be using all these components all over again and you'll have you know a second look through these components of course that time i won't explain everything in great detail but what i do adjust and what i do move i will explain i think this way it will be easier the second time around when you guys see these components it'll be easier for you guys to remember what they do and the reason i will be using them for and uh, help you guys you know when we are creating a game help you guys make your own type of game your own unique game so you guys don't have to copy exactly everything i am doing you can actually you know figure it out yourself because of all this knowledge of these videos right here so that's the reason i'm doing these videos if anybody was curious and uh that's right and that's also why i'm moving so quickly so i do apologize for that but like i said don't worry i will cover all these components all over again when we're making games um but yeah that's pretty much that for this video in the next videos i'll be talking about um the configurable joint uh constant force fixed joint hinge joint mesh collider all these uh next video is probably just going to be the configurable joint and maybe the constant force configurable joint has a lot to it so let me just show you guys so there's a lot to this so uh stay tuned for the next video if you guys want to see it also, if you guys learned anything in this video, if you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button. Also, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. Helps this channel. Helps other people that are interested in learning about cloths, about configurable joints, about rigid bodies, about colliders. Uh, you know, help them out as well. Uh, and also, like I said uh, previously, all these assets will be in the description below. So just check them out. I'm pretty sure they're all free including the water so just check it out make sure they're free and once again thank you